Welcome to From the Sacred Jainism Scripture Uttaradhyayana Part 1 of 2 Lecture 21 Samudrapala The religion of Jainism, traditionally called Jain Dharma, originated in ancient India. Jain Dharma emphasizes the value of right perception, right knowledge, and right conduct. Through inner reflection and sincere practice of these principles, one can attain moksha or realization of the soul's true nature. The concept of ahimsa or non-violence is also central to Jainism. Thus, with respect for all life, Jain practitioners follow a pure vegan or plant-based diet. The Jain lineage includes 24 Tirthankaras or beings who share their enlightenment with others. The Tirthankaras' teachings comprise the Agam Sutras, which are the holy scriptures of Jainism. The 24th and last Tirthankara was Lord Mahavira, whose name means Great Hero. Born into a royal family in 599 BC, Prince Mahavira decided as a young man to pursue a solitary spiritual life. After 12 years of intensive meditation, he attained Kevalagyana or the highest wisdom. Lord Mahavira was known to face all obstacles with acceptance and forgiveness. He also shared discourses on spiritual truths which formed the basis of present-day Jainism. Supreme Master Ching Hai has paid tribute on several occasions to the spiritual strength and devotion of Lord Mahavira during lectures given in Taiwan, also known as Formosa. I don't know if anyone in the history of mankind could have done or could be doing or will be doing such an ascetism, such a sacrifice like the Lord Mahavira. We really salute him and are grateful <laughs> to all that he had to endure for enlightenment for the sake of others, yes. All these sufferings are not for naught. They would benefit the world in some way or another, even without the Lord Mahavira knowing, or even without the world people knowing or being grateful for. We now invite you to listen to excerpts from the 21st lecture of Uttaradhyayana, one of the most important scriptures in Jainism. This lecture, called Samudrapala, describes how Samudrapala, on his way to the palace, became enlightened at once after seeing a man sentenced to death. 21st lecture, Samudrapala in Kampa, there lived a Shravaka disciple, the merchant Palita, who was a disciple of the noble and venerable Mahavira. As a Shravaka, he was well versed in the doctrines of the Nirgranthas, Jain monks. Once he went by boat to the town of Pihunda on business. A merchant gave him his daughter while he was doing business in Pihunda. When she was big with child, he took her with him on his returning home. Now the wife of Palita was delivered of a child at sea. As the boy was born at sea, Samudra, he was named Samudrapala. Our merchant, the Shravaka, went leisurely to Kampa to his house. In his house, the boy grew up surrounded by comfort. He studied the 72 arts and acquired knowledge of the world. He was in the bloom of youth and had a fine figure and good looks. His father procured him a beautiful wife, Rupini, with whom he amused himself in his pleasant palace, like a Dogundaga, Triastrimsa god. Once upon a time, he saw from the window of his palace a man sentenced to death, dressed for execution, on his way to the place of execution. Agitated by what he saw, Samudrapala spoke thus, of wicked actions, this is the bad result. He became enlightened at once, the venerable man, and he was immensely agitated. He took leave of his parents and entered the state of houselessness. Abandoning the great distress to which the worldly are liable, the great delusion, and whatever causes fear, 
one should adopt the law, spiritual precepts of monks, the vows, the virtues, and the endurance of calamities. One should give the five great vows, namely not to kill, to speak the truth, not to steal, to be chaste, to have no property whatever. A wise man should follow the law, spiritual precepts taught by the genus Arihants. A monk should have compassion on all beings, should be of a forbearing character, should be restrained and chaste, and abstaining from everything sinful. He should live with his senses under control. Now and then he should travel in one country, taking into consideration its resources and his own ability. Like a lion, he should not be frightened by any noise, and whatever words he hears, he should not make an improper reply. In utter indifference, he should walk about and bear everything, be it pleasant or unpleasant. He should not approve of everything everywhere, nor care for respectful treatment or blame. There are many opinions here among men, which a monk places in their true light. There will rise many dangerous and dreadful calamities caused by gods, men, or animals, which are difficult to be borne and cause easily discouraged men to sink under them. But a monk who comes in contact with them will not be afraid, like a stately elephant at the head of the battle. Cold and heat, flies and gnats, unpleasant feelings, and many diseases attack the body. Without flinching, he should bear them and should not recall to his memory the pleasures he once enjoyed. Giving up love, hatred, and delusion, a monk who is always careful and who is steadfast even as Mount Meru cannot be shaken by the storm, should bear calamities guarding himself. A great sage should be neither too elevated by pride nor too humble. He should not care for respectful treatment nor blame. An ascetic who has ceased to act will by means of his simplicity enter the path of nirvana. He is neither grieved nor pleased by anything. He abandons his relations with men. He ceases to act, is intent on the benefit of his soul. He strives for the highest good, namely mukti, freedom from samsara, and uses the means to reach it free from sorrow, egoism, and any kind of property. A merciful monk should use baits distant from others, which are not got ready for his sake, nor strewn with leaves or things considered to be possessed of life. He should sustain such hardships as the sages are accustomed to. The great sage Samudrapala, understanding the sacred lore and practicing completely the best law, spiritual precepts, shone forth like the sun in the sky, being possessed of the highest knowledge and glory. Having annihilated his karma, both meritorious and sinful, being steadfast and free from all fetters, Samudrapala crossed the ocean-like flood of worldly existence and obtained exemption from transmigration. Thus I say, I've been vegan since my early 20s. People stop eating animal products for different reasons. For me, it was philosophical, but my health certainly improved as a result of not eating anything to do with animals. The Honorable Christina Reese, vegan. Kind-hearted viewers, it's been a pleasure to have your company for today's show on Words of Wisdom. 